here we are again and it's time for me to show you another of my modeling techniques um, now before I do I'd like to draw your attention to a couple of little alterations I've made to these wagons since the last video um, one thing I've done is I have painted the ends of the brake levers there in white which was prototypical um, may not actually be visible under the weathering, but I know it's there. And yes, I realise that I said, if you can't see it beyond a certain distance, there's no point in having it. Hypocrisy, thy name is me. Uh, the other thing I have been trying um, is, I, I, don't, I don't know if this will actually work, but um, I picked up a box of oil pastels. Uh, at the weekend. Here is an oil pastel, sort of coming in in a sinister fashion. And um, what I've done is I've kind of used it to sort of pick out, um, just gonna just gonna demonstrate here, just add a add a sort of few little patches of um, of orange in on the brake gear there, kind of places where you might expect, you know, where you might expect some rust to appear. Uh, I'm going to do the same on the other side here. Um, if you look at photos, you kind of see that, you know, you tended to get it kind of around the springs, around the, around the brake shoes. This is very rough. Um, there we go. I'm just going to rub it off there. I have no idea if this will work. I might have just ruined a perfectly good wagon, but we'll see. Okay, so now on to the main body. Okay, so the next technique I would like to look at is weathering powders. Um, now, powders are used by modelers to create a sort of anything with a dusty effect, so soot, rust, um, coal dust, you know, dried mud, anything like that. Uh, lots of companies produce weathering powders. However, I'm a bit of a cheapskate, so I like to do something different. And what I like to do is this. I like to use eyeshadow for my model railways, I must emphasize. I like to use eyeshadow for my model railways um, because it's basically the same stuff as um, as weathering powders, only you can get it a lot cheaper. Um, this eyeshadow I picked up online for, I think, about £3. Um, there's a lot of colours that I can't really use there, but these browns are fantastically useful. Um, I also picked up this one that's kind of black, grey and white. Um, you can get you can get cheap eyeshadow in you know Primark, Poundland or whatever. People sometimes get a bit funny about it, like you know, oh, I I, I don't want to sort of go up to the to the counter and have the person behind it look at me funny because I'm a bloke and I'm buying eyeshadow. I guarantee you, a minimum wage employee in Poundland is not going to care that you're buying eyeshadow. Um, you know, five seconds after the transaction, they will have forgotten who you are. Alternatively, like I did, you can just buy it online. Uh, you need to make sure that you get matte um, eyeshadow because some of it comes with glitter, which kind of, you know, un unless you're doing some sort of drag show themed model railway, isn't really appropriate. Um, yeah, uh, go for a matte palette, which sounds like an 80s detective who doesn't play by the rules and like, his his captain is an attractive woman named Stacy, and like they have an antagonistic relationship, but you think they're going to get together sooner or later. Anyway, yes, a matte palette is what you need. So, let me show you what you do with your eyeshadow. Okay, so what I am doing is and there we go. Just shove that aside inelegantly. I am using a cheap makeup brush. Um. Again, I, th I believe this one actually came from Poundland. And um, just going to sort of get this powder on there, like that. And this this uh, 
rather grubby wagon is. I'm, I'm saying that this is a wagon that's normally used for coal. Um, I personally think it's quite useful to sort of have an idea of the history of the item that you're weathering. Um, just, just for the sake of, you know, of realism. Um, I'm saying this one's mostly been used for coal, so what I am doing is I'm getting this black, I am putting it sort of around the doors. Um, this is the end door, so I'm going to kind of have a have a lot of soot there, kind of cover up the brake lever a bit. And that was totally out of shot, so well done me. Okay, let's let's skip to the end, shall we? Okay, I've used some black there. I'm just going to so I've got this I've got this dark grey and I'm just going to add a bit of that just here and there just just to make it all look a little bit more interesting. I'm just gonna get it under the door there. And there you go. That's kind of, it's kind of added a, some subtle tones there. Uh, you can keep going and going. You, some people like to seal their powder with uh, varnish. Um, others find that it kind of compromises the overall effect. I don't bother myself. Uh, I, I think it looks fine as it is. If the powder rubs off over time, you can just add more. Okay, now I'm going to sort of play around with this brown. There we go, I'm just going to kind of tone down that oil pastel colour there. Yeah, okay, that's that's really worked a treat actually. That's You can still see this sort of slightly more vivid patch of orange, but the powder kind of ties it all together. Just as planned. Mwahahaha. There we go, let's do the other side. Notice how quick this is. And I'm going to add a bit of brown on this wagon too. Like I say, round the springs and the brakes you would get, you would expect sort of a bit of rust. There we go. On this one, obviously, it's a it's a coal wagon. It's very dusty, so mostly you kind of want a sort of grey black effect there. And yeah, I think that one is done. So there you have it. You can see we've come quite a long way from our starting point with this uh, rather basic kiddie wagon to something that, you know, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but I don't think that would look out of place on a proper model railway. Next up, why don't we look at what we're going to put in these wagons?